Okay, in this problem we're asked to find the maximum volume of a box where it costs, the total cost is $5.40 and the bottom costs four cents per square inch, the sides cost two cents per square inch, and the top costs one cent per square inch. Okay, so first we want to uh, write down what we know, so we know that the volume is the length times the width times the height of our box here. And we know that our total cost is going to be $5.40. So I'll write our equation in terms of cents. So we have 540 cents to work with. And we'll set that equal to the sum of our surface area, which is times the cost for each of the sections. So for the bottom, we have four cents. And the bottom is composed of the length times the width. So we have four times LW. And then we'll also add the top in. So the top costs one cent per square inch. And the top is also the length times the width. So we can go ahead and just add that here. So we have 5LW after adding in the top. And then the sides cost 2 cents per square inch. And the sides, we have two sides that are the height times the length and two sides that are the height times the width. So we have So we have 2 times the quantity, 2 cents times the quantity 2HW plus 2LW. So we can go ahead and factor out a 2H from each term. So we have 4H times W plus L. So our total cost 540 is equal to 5LW plus 4H times the quantity W plus L. Okay, so we might want to, so we want to optimize the volume, find the critical points, um, but our volume is dependent on this equation. So we need to use our information here and solve for one of the variables length, width, or height, and then plug it into our volume. So it seems like uh, an easy variable to solve for would be h, so we'll go ahead and do that. So So we have that h is equal to 540 minus 5LW all over the quantity W plus L. Oh, um, all over the quantity 4W plus L. So we can go ahead and plug in to our volume. So we can set So we have our volume is equal to length times width times our solved equation for h. So I just added that so that equality remains. And so now we want to optimize this equation. And we do that in the normal way. We'll take the gradient vector of our volume function now in terms of just w and l. So we'll have two equations that we want both to equal to zero in order to optimize. So So we'll take the partial derivative of v with respect to l, and then partial derivative of v with respect to w. So,
I just multiplied out the LW here on the top on the numerator. So we have 540 times LW minus 5 times L squared W squared. So it's a little bit more manageable in our derivative. Okay, so for our first component of our gradient vector, we have this, um, this fraction. We have 4 times the quantity W plus L times the quantity 540W minus 10LW minus 4 times the quantity 540LW minus 5L squared W squared. So first off, we can just simplify this a little bit, factor out the 4. And move the 4 from the bottom. So we have 4 times the quantity, all divided by 4 times the quantity w plus l squared. And now we'll go ahead and just um, take the partial derivative of the second term. So we'll take the partial derivative of v with respect to l. So similarly, Okay, so we again have the quantity W plus L times the quantity 540L minus 10L squared W and minus 540LW minus 5L squared W squared all over 4 times the quantity W plus L squared. Okay, so we want to know when our gradient vector is equal to zero, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we set the first component equal to zero, and notice that I've removed the denominator because our denominator was four times W plus L squared, and in order to have a box, we know that W and L are both more than zero, so W plus L squared will also be more than zero, so we can multiply both sides of our equation by 4 times w plus l squared, which removes our denominator. And I've also factored out a w plus l um, from both of, from, or I've multiplied the w plus l times the first and the second term. And then I also carried through the negative sign on the second uh, term. So now we have our second equation.
And again, I removed the denominator. So we'll go ahead and just do some basic algebra and multiply out these equations. So we have So our first equation turns to 540W squared plus 540LW minus 10LW cubed minus 10L squared W minus 540LW plus 5L squared W squared. So we can combine like terms. So we have a minus 540LW and a plus 540LW. So those two terms cancel. And that's it for right now, but notice that we have a w in each term, so we can go ahead and factor out a w next time. Um, I'll go ahead and do this same simplification for number two. Okay, so again, our 540LW terms cancel, and we're left with an L in each term now. So we're going to factor a W out of this equation and an L out of this equation. And notice that we actually also can factor out a factor of 5. So So we have 108W minus 2LW squared minus 2L squared plus L squared W. And that's all equal to 0 times 5W. Um, number 2, we're going to factor out, again, factor of 5 and an L this time. So we have... Sorry, I, I just noticed that I still had L squared W squared when it should be L squared W. And here we have 5L times the quantity 108L minus 2LW squared minus 2L squared W plus LW squared. All is equal to zero. 
So now we'll go ahead and factor an L outside of, it would appear as though I forgot to um, write minus 10 L squared W squared. And um, as a result, we actually have a W squared term that we can pull out instead of just W. And likewise, we can factor out an L squared from all of these terms. So that looks better. So we have 5w squared now times the quantity 108 minus 2lw minus 2l squared plus l squared. So obviously these two will simplify, so we get just minus L squared. And here we have 5L squared times the quantity 108 minus 2W squared minus 2LW plus W squared. And again, the W squared terms will um, Combine, so we have just minus w squared. Now again, um, we stated earlier that w and l are both positive, so they're not equal, notably they're not equal to zero, so we can divide both sides of our equation by 5w squared and 5l squared respectively. So these terms also cancel out. So we're left with 108 minus 2LW minus L squared and equals 0, and 108 minus W squared minus 2L squared is equal to 0. So we see that we have uh, 108 minus 2LW is equal to L squared from our first equation. And we have that 108 minus 2LW is equal to W squared from our second equation. So we can set these equations equal to each other and we see that L squared equals W squared or L is equal to plus or minus W. But since both of them are positive, we only care about when L is equal to just positive W. Okay, so now we have our uh, equation is satisfied when L is equal to W, and we want to find out what the volume is. So first we can We'll go ahead and plug into our equations for L and W. So we'll set L equal to W. So we have 2W So we have 
times 540w squared, and we have minus 540w squared, so we have just Five forty W squared, and we have a minus twenty W cubed and plus five W to the fourth equals zero. So we can factor out W squared. And we get the following equation. We know w is not equal to 0. So we can divide both sides by it. And now we have a quadratic formula. Or we can use the quadratic formula to determine what w is. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a factor of 5 as well. So when we factor out the 5, we can divide both sides by 5 again. So we have w squared minus 4w plus 108. So we have Four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 108 all over 2. So we can simplify this a little bit. We'll factor a 4 out of both of these inside terms and then the square root of 4 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So we have plus or minus Just not my day. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no problem. Do you want to get take a break? And... I don't know what's going on. Um, this is, should not be negative. <laughs>
Oh, all right. I know <laughs> what the mistake is. Right. Cool. Um, How far back do you have to go? Just right here. So can you pick up now the trace and make a new trace further back here? Or do I need to um, check here? Yeah, I could do that. Okay, so it appears as though um, obviously this radical should not be negative. And so I realized that my mistake was in factoring this 2w times 10w cubed. Wrote it as negative 20w cubed when it should be negative 20w to the fourth. So we can now simplify this a little bit. So we'll just ignore this. For right now, so we have five forty W squared is equal to fifteen W to the fourth. Factor out five, so we have one oh eight. And we can also divide by w squared. So we have 108 is equal to 3w squared, or w squared is equal to 36. And since w is positive, we know that w is equal to 6. OK, so and l is equal to w. So we know that the width is equal to the length is equal to 6. So now all that's left is to find our height. So we had determined using our cost equation that our height is equal to 540 minus 5L squared W squared all over 4 times W plus L. And when we plug in W and L are equal to 6, we get 540 minus 5LW. I'm sorry, I forgot that um, the L squared W squared was after we multiplied by L times W to get the volume. So our height is just 540 minus 5LW all over 4 times W plus L, which makes more sense. So we have Five forty or five times one the quantity one oh eight minus thirty six over four times twelve 
which is 7.5. And so now we want to determine what our max volume is. Since we only have one critical point, that critical point must be the max volume. And our volume is length times width times height at our critical point, which is 6 times 6 times 7.5, or 36 times 7.5, which is 270. Two hundred and seventy cubic inches is the maximum volume that we can create using um, just five dollars and forty cents. <laughs>